All right. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Hey, hey, your fathers. Good to see you this morning. Uh, happy uh, Sunday. Actually, today uh, we'll be focusing on Father's Day, but today is also uh, Juneteenth. Uh, it's at the anniversary in uh, June, June 19th in 1865 when finally the Emancipation Proclamation, which was um, to free all the slaves, um, uh, black Africans in America, um, was finally enforced successfully. So that's what we celebrate every year. Juneteenth is on June 19th. So I'm going to read just a little excerpt from uh, President Biden's proclamation uh, that he made regarding Juneteenth. On Juneteenth, we remember our extraordinary capacity to heal, to hope, and to emerge from our worst moments as a stronger, freer, and more just nation. It is also a day to celebrate the power and resilience of black Americans who have endured generations of oppression in the ongoing journey towards equal justice, equal dignity, equal rights, and equal opportunity in America. So, hooray, this is an important uh, uh, milestone in, in American history, one of the, the Sometimes we call it the original sin of, of America, was that slavery was allowed to persist. And so uh, we definitely claim this victory and uh, recognize and celebrate it uh, today. And actually now, uh, just recently, it became a federal holiday. So some of you who work for the government will have uh, Monday off this tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but today I'm going to focus on uh, Father's Day. So let me read, uh, just starting with uh, the book of Genesis. From Unifications, we really um, want to emphasize God's divine plan and creation for our lives and for the universe. So, um, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So when we teach and talk uh, uh, about God's plan and God's ideal of creation, we emphasize that God is represented through parents. Uh, God's original masculinity is expressed through fatherly love. And God's original femininity is expressed through motherly love. And so God's ideal is that through parents, children would be able to experience God. The husband would represent the masculine love, the wife would be able to represent the feminine love, and the children would be able to experience the richness of all that God wants us to experience in knowing and experiencing his love. So it's, it's interesting, of course, a month ago we celebrated Mother's Day. So this month we're celebrating Father's Day, and actually next month we'll be celebrating them together with Parents' Day, right? So it's amazing God's design that mother's love, motherly love, the feminine love, and fatherly love together create a beautiful partnership and beautiful environment for children to grow up in. Um, motherly love, you know, and this is stereotypical because sometimes dads do it more than moms and, you know, vice versa. But in general, the more feminine love is caring, it's the kind of unconditional love providing protection, it call it sometimes the, the soft, embracing uh, love, and it builds a secure feeling of being loved and supported and encouraged. And this is an important part for children, for all of us, you know, as we grow and develop. On the other hand, fatherly love, rather than being focused on caring, is more about challenging. A lot more exciting, as we saw in the videos, right? There was lots of adventure there. A lot more risk-taking, right, with the dads. Sometimes moms, I remember just playing with our daughter Renata and throwing her up in the air. And, and, and now we're going, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> but this is dad's love, right? And also, you know, mothers where they can be kind of really unconditional, uh, loving and embracing fathers tend to be the more authoritative you know 
the more conditional love. Like, uh, how many of you ever heard the expression, wait till your dad gets home, right? <laughs> so dad was like the enforcer. And so, you know, and you know, so dad's love was tended to be more of the, the, the hard kind of love, the tough love. But really, dad's love is also about building confidence uh, in, in the world. And this partnership is a beautiful design because the father gives support to the mother. Because really, the, you know, moms, moms carry a big load. I mean, we talked a lot about that last month when we celebrated Mother's Day, right? Because, you know, and it's easy to burn out. And so part of dad's job is to support mom, you know, and to create that supportive environment that it can really be a rich environment for the children to grow up in. So, let me share just a, a few Bible verses about the dads. Here's uh, from uh, St. Paul in the book of Ephesians. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And then this uh, from 1 Timothy. Now the overseer is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. So this is, the, of course, the ideal. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I feel uncomfortable when I look at the ideal, being a dad. <laughs> but it's something for us to strive for and aim for. And be grateful for any experience that we have. You know, dads, especially as all of us have dads. So... Our dads did the best they could, given what they had. So, you know, kids, please take, remember that when you think about us dads. <laughs> uh, also, this is from, um, uh, also from the book of Ephesians, but it's going back to the Ten Commandments and calling from the uh, Exodus, the 20th chapter, where it says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. This is God's design for the family with the father and the mother creating the environment. The children by being obedient and honoring and learning will able to naturally grow to experience God and, and find their own fulfillment in their lives. So, Satan is attacking the family. Satan is desperately working and working very hard to destroy families. And he has two main strategies. Two main strategies of attack. The first is separating husbands and wives. You know, all the way going back to Adam and Eve, there's the difficulty between husbands and wives, right? Between men and women. <clears throat> And so Satan works that. Every way that God, that Satan can find a way to put a division in between husbands and wives, Satan will do. And he's doing it in the environment. And secondly, by separating fathers from their children. It's easy for dads to be absent. And actually in this world, it's really uh, become the culture that separates fathers from their children. Actually, um, looking back even from the, the 1960s with the whole um, movement to uh, the war on poverty, one of the serious unintended consequences, I mean, of course, getting rid of poverty and helping people with hands up is definitely you know, a worthwhile goal. But the unintended consequence was to remove dad from the home. Actually, there was a rule, actually, you know, written into the, the welfare code. It's, it was called the man in the house rule. 
And if there was any able-bodied man in the house, they were ineligible for any kind of assistance. And, and I heard that even they had inspectors go out to people's houses to check. Oh, now does it look like there's a man living here? You know, check for toothbrushes and who knows what, you know? I mean, how destructive that ended up being. I mean, yeah, you can see there's possibly reasoning behind why, the, why their strategy there. But the, the effect was horrific on, on families, especially on poor families. So what happens is that husbands and wives become more and more separated. You know, if, if your financial well-being is depending on having the man there or not, well, yeah, <laughs> easy to say, okay, bye-bye. But also, meaning that ch many children grew up without the experience of their father. Now, there's some, some, tr some scary statistics uh, to share about single parenting. Um, America has the highest percent of any country in the world of children who are living in a single parent home. Actually, the number is 23%. And even looking at the, the, the statistics from the graph that I saw, there's only like maybe 10 countries in the world that have over 15%. You know, all the, all the rest of the countries of the world, it's like 90% of family, or you know, 85% of families all have two parents in their household. I mean, the, the England was number two. They had like, their number was 21%, and the, uh, Russia was number three at 19%. This is scary. You know, when we, I'm going to come back to it, but when we talk about the problems in America, particularly crime, this is one statistic. They say, oh, why? There's all this crime in America. Well, here's a one very important statistic for us to look at in terms of what's at the root of that. Now, in addition to that, single moms in America today. Now, there's always been single moms and, you know, God bless, you know, God bless single moms. You know, the, it's amazing the kind of job that, that you have to do. But historically, like even going back into the 1960s, even though there was still, a, a, you know, a fair number of single households, almost all of them were a result of maybe divorce. You know, sometimes marriages didn't work out or, or widowed. That was the vast majority, or somehow the, the father was absent. Only 4% of single parent households were because they were never married. As of 2020, over half. 52% of single parent households have never been married, have never had dad in the house at all. So this, is, this also points to another truly significant and scary challenge that we face in America today, is the, the loss of the institution and the value of marriage. And with losing that, we lose fathers from the home. Especially in the culture that we have today, the cultural values really lifts up single moms. You don't need a, a man. <laughs> this is like the radical feminism. You know, Mother Moon is definitely pushing true feminism, right, with Women's Federation and like that. But this kind of radical feminism, you know, women and men are the same and women don't need men, you know, and our lives would be better without them, right? This kind of thinking. And the scary thing is that this, you see these examples in the media all the time, all over the place. And even really toxic examples of this, you know, uh, the main character is this powerful businesswoman who has sex with lots of different men, no intention of ever getting married, no kids, you know, and just, you know, living this kind of really idealistic lifestyle. I mean, those kinds of models are put out. And, and fathers, 
maybe men in general, you know, oh, worry about their toxic masculinity, right? We gotta, you know, feminize men because their toxic masculinity is the cause of evil in the world. And even the way we see dads oftentimes portrayed in, in, in movies and in TV shows, they're, you know, either they're fools or they're evil. <laughs> You know, it's like this culture is really uh, anti-family, and particularly anti, you know, not recognizing that two parents are the really so important and so valuable for a healthy family and a healthy household. Uh, Mother Moon just recently asked the the, the leaders of. Um, uh, the Universal Peace Federation and the American Clergy Leadership Conference to, to take on the issue of violence in America. You know, the, the Stop a Violence uh, campaign. And you know, the th first place people tend to go is, okay, let's get rid of the guns. So, fine. Even if you do that, that's not going to solve the problem because it doesn't deal with the root cause of why violence is, is being committed. Looking at the numbers, 88% of violent crimes are committed by males. And 85% of young people in prison grew up in fatherless homes. It's not uh, poverty, which a lot of people say it's, it's because of poverty and unemployment that there's so much violence in, in, the, in, in America today. You know, that's uh, actually crazy because there was a lot more poverty in America, you know, 20, 50 years ago. And if you look at, at nations that have great, you know, high levels of poverty, you don't see the same kind of violence. But what you do see in America is this lack of intact families, lack of fathers in the household. Hey, here's just in general, without a father, statistically, children are more likely to end up in prison than if they did have a father in the home. Uh, to end up homeless, to be involved in drug alcohol abuse, to experience abuse or neglect, or in the future become abusers or neglectors of their children. A uh, drop out from school, become pregnancy as a teenager, um, become a single parent themselves, and, and experience or be involved in domestic violence. So, you know, a while back I, I talked about this uh, uh, very interesting, it's a, it was an international study. They did an analysis of 36 different studies that were done all around the world, internationally. And it involved over uh, 10,000 parents and children. And one, some of the key findings from that was about what was the outcome for children that felt rejected by their father? Either because of you know, violence in the home or the absence of the father. And it showed that they had much more problems with anger or aggression. And that's, just, that's just the reality. They tended to have a lower self-esteem, feelings of inadequacy. They were more emotionally unstable and had a more pessimistic view of life than people who grew up, you know, young people who grew up in a family that was intact, that had both father and mother there. <clears throat> also, on the other side, those that did feel like they were loved by their father and accepted by their father, and, you know, the presence of the father has much less hostility in their, in their whole style. They tend to be easier to be more independent and had healthy self-esteem, felt, you know, confident in uh, feelings of adequacy. They were more stable emotionally and they tended to have a more optimistic or positive worldview. Fatherly love, and they said even more than looking at mother's love, you know, Father's love more strongly predicted the satis uh, person growing up to become self satisfied and having good well-being and, and tended to be a protective factor against uh, drug and alcohol abuse and problems of depression. So, for good or bad, 
fathers make an impact in the household. If they're present, then even just the presence of a father makes an impact. And today is a day, Father's Day, for us to appreciate fathers. You know, as dads, <laughs> we are flawed. <laughs> Some of us were, are more flawed than others, but uh, even as we think about our fathers, and I think uh, about my father, you know, uh, they always do the best they can. They always do the best they, that they're able to do, given their own upbringing, their own experience, their own difficulties and challenges in life. But we as children can always be grateful because of our father we have existence. And of course also because of our mother. So if we have a, a heart of appreciation and gratitude, and you know, Father's Day, this is the day for us definitely to, to take advantage and to do that. Right? To acknowledge, even, you know, uh, if our parent or father is in the spiritual world, you know, we know the spirit world is real. We can offer prayer in heart to, to the father. Even the fathers that had lots of shortcomings, there's things that we can express gratitude for. And today is a day especially for us to dig deep and, and, and find those and offer those up that we can also experience joy and comfort and recognize with gratitude the blessings that, that we've received. Fathers make an important impact uh, on children. And it's important in our world today that we look, especially as unificationists, we're deeply committed to empowering families. So this is the blessing of marriage and encouraging people to rededicate their marriage and to bring God into the presence and the relationship between husband and wife. This is part of our active efforts to counter the narrative of the fallen world. The narrative of the media that says, oh, you don't need a man, you know. The narrative that says, you know, men are, you know, toxic and they need to be more like women and women need to be more like men. And, and it's somehow losing the value that each, each quality, you know, the, the different qualities that, of masculine and of feminine, for, that God's qualities that are meant to be represented in the household through a father and a mother, through two working together. So, for today, for us as fathers, we need to think, okay, what kind of impact as a father do I want to make with my children. For those of us who kids are kind of grown up, we still are making an impact in their lives but we, and need to be conscientious about that. But hopefully in the future we'll be in the position to be grandparents, right? And even as the grandfather, we have an opportunity to have an impact in the lives and experiences of our grandchildren. For moms, also for, for you to consider you're raising up your sons to become fathers in the future. And with that in mind, you know, investing and thinking, how do I prepare my, my son? And I, how do I work together with, uh, with my son's father to help him be a true responsible man and father in the future? Sisters! All right, so even you've got that brother, that kind of bothersome, irritating brother, right, <laughs> in your life, <laughs> with a, uh, uh, your, your heavenly heart, think, I actually help raise my brother. And how do I participate in supporting my brother in being a responsible person, growing up to be a responsible man, and a great father. This is the investment we can all make. All of us can make this investment. And then how about us as sons? As we grow, as we develop, especially as we prepare for marriage, prepare for the future, we need to think what kind of man do I want to be in preparing to be a good husband and especially to become a good father in the future and investing now in preparing my heart 
This is so much what uh, Father and Mother Moon are encouraging us. You know, in this time in our life, we have the time to build a rich foundation. So that when it comes time to begin a family, we, we start our family on a, a foundation of knowing and, and having committed to develop our heart and our character. So I like to close with this. this every year I, I like to close with this. It's a, a quote from um, Father Moon's uh, uh, autobiography where he talks about his experience with his father. Because what God wants us to experience is joy and comfort and healing and nurturing through our experience with our fathers. So I love the the vision that uh, Father Moon shares. It's in sharing his own experience. This is the vision of what we want to see all children be able to experience. This kind of touching and heartfelt experience with dads. So let me read from a peace-loving global citizen. I would often fall asleep in the hills after playing there. My father would be forced to come find me. When I heard my father shouting in the distance, Young, 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 I couldn't help but smile, even as I slept. My name as a young child was Young, young. The sound of his voice would awaken me, but I would pretend to still be asleep. He would hoist me onto his back and carry me home. That feeling I had as he carried me down the hill, feeling completely secure and able to let my heart be completely at ease, that was peace. That is how I learned about peace while being carried on my father's back. Had you? Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for your love, your care, your embrace, and your investment in each one of our lives. And we're grateful for your expression of love as, 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 as we first experienced it through our Father and through our Mother. And while Heavenly Parent, we know that that they fell far short of what you hoped to be able to pour out in our development and the love that we were meant to experience. Still, we're grateful for what we could experience and pray that we can heal in our hearts all those areas where we, we, we know the lack and we know the missing parts of love that we were meant to experience. We want to offer up forgiveness and healing and truly claim the things that you were able to give us through our Father and through our Mother. And Heavenly Parent, as we've matured and and become parents ourselves, we also repent, knowing how much you want your love to just pour freely through us to our children. And so we repent for our own shortcomings, our own inabilities to convey that love and pray that, that however you were able and grateful for you, how you have been able to, to touch them through us in our lives. We are so, so grateful that we can be vessels of your love and pray we can continue to grow our hearts so that your love can flow naturally and freely through us. And those of us still preparing to become parents, husbands and wives in the future, Heavenly Parent, please work in our hearts and minds. Please help us to heal from, uh, again, our experiences of the lack of love. Help us to know and experience your love and to be vessels of your love so that especially through our husband-wife relationship we can, we can multiply the power and the presence of your love. And especially as we become parents, that your love will flow freely through us to our children. That the hope that you have when you established Adam and Eve as the true parents, meant to be the true parents of all humanity, will finally come true through your experience of of blessed families here on earth today. So Heavenly Parent, today we're celebrating Father's Day. So we pray you can also find joy and happiness as we celebrate and honor you as our original true father. And we're so grateful for having true father and true parents on the earth. And as we acknowledge and honor the fathers that are responsible for us having life. 
So together as your sons and daughters and as blessed sense families, we offer up ourselves in this prayer to you. Amen and adieu.